Now, first we begin. I would like to say something before I say what I really come to say. I can say there is a rumor. Well, whether you like it or not, I'm going to say it. There is a rumor going around, and everybody is saying that my wife pet me through a window. That is not true. Now she really pelt a shirt and pants through the window. And well, I just happened to be wearing them at the time. <laughs> but she never pelt me through the window. Boy, I don't know. All of a sudden, I reach home from work. My mother in law go watch me and tell me, boom, drunk. You're always drunk. And if I was your wife, she will give me corn beef and rice with poison. I say if I was your husband, I would have eat the corn beef and rice. <laughs> Next thing you know, I am born. <laughs> Wait, me then? The fall feel nice. I feel like I was floating. Is the sudden stop shit now? I had a half in my back pocket. When I feel the wetness, I say, Lord, let that be blood. <laughs> he didn't answer my prison. The half break and well cut up my bottom. You talk about cut on my bottom. It's like a corruption case, only cut up. Well, I go in the mirror and I reverse in the mirror too. And I take a box of plaster. And a well plaster. I use the whole box of plaster on my bottom. And I go in my bed. Next thing you know, my wife asks me, Oh, why are you so drunk? I say, How oh, you know I'm drunk? You know, when I go on, all the plaster on the mirror. <laughs> I'm gonna believe it. Why not she throw my pants and shirt through the window? I say I'm going and gently she asks. So I'm going upstairs and I watch my wife in she face. I say boom down. Don't make yourself an ass. My wife, so big and fat, that if you're watching a DVD. And she only passed in front of the TV, you lost five minutes of the movie. <laughs> Today, we crossing the priority, and a bus bong she. She says, somebody pelting stones. <laughs> I say, it don't make sense trying to jump the sheep. So I leave it so. Now, she always on my case about a drinking too much. I don't know why people just feel that I have a drinking problem. I don't have a problem. And all those who do chemistry will know that rum is not a problem. It is a solution. <laughs> and all who find that are drinking too much rum, she try to eat it. At the time I try to eat rum, you know, it tastes like cotton candy and pepper sauce. <laughs> so I say, why are you supposed to stop drinking rum? Even the doctor tell me, stop drinking rum. He say, boom, boom, how much you just drink? I say, well, I just drink a bottle of punchy on a day. Well, you don't know what is punchy on? It is not punching. All you don't know what is punching? P-U-N-C-H-E-O-N is punchy on. I say, well, I just drink a bottle of punchy on a day. The doctor tell me, drink a half for the next week. And then I will drink a nip for the next week. I drink a PQ and I will listen down and drink. I say, no, see. 
Well, the next week I got drunk again. He said, boom, don't and I talk to you, but say yes. But when I live by you, I went by an next doctor for a second opinion. And he tell me the same thing. So I drink a half a he and a half a you. <laughs> Everybody wants me to stop drinking rum. I say, but I love rum. Rum is my shepherd, I shall always want. Makes me to lie down in drains and canals. <laughs> but when you're drunk, you just have time to think about all kind of things. Now I was going and stopped drinking the other day. But when I wash the bottle, and I think about all the people in the brewery, where they make any rum, and I say, if I don't drink this rum, they might lose the work. I say, you know, boom, don't do not be selfish and drink the rum and let it keep the work in. All these alcoholic. Listen, all I know Adam and Eve was African. Yes, Adam and Eve couldn't be no other kind of people. It couldn't be Chinese because Chinese eat snake. And from this time a snake appeared to Eve, they would have laughed it and cook it. But when I reached so far, it could not be Indian neither, because if you put two Indian in a garden laden with fruit, they'll go in the market. I tell him, it's only African. That go be in a garden, you and your husband naked, and all you can find to do when the day come is talk to a snake. <laughs> Imagine I pass in a, and a snake tell me, <laughs> and here you know, hmm? They say, boom down, what steps you will take if you are confronted with a snake? I say, big ones. <laughs> if it was me in the garden, it wouldn't have reached so far either. Because I ain't talking to no snake. That is madness. But you know what caused that? When your eye too long, is what caused that. Because I went in a bakery on Independence Square today. And I see, I would like the person in charge of the stage to stop moving up, up and down, please. <laughs> and I went into a bakery today. And I see ten drops in a glass case. Well, it was really five, but I see ten. <laughs> and out of the ten drops, one have a reason in it. Well, my eye long, so I say, I will let drops with the raisin on it. You know, from the time they mark all the drops with the tongues, the raisin fly away and go on to the next raisin. <laughs> when the eye long, them things happen. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I carried my wife and my mother-in-law to Jerusalem last year. It cost me plenty of money because you know I have to get a plane for my mother-in-law. When we reached Jerusalem, my mother-in-law dead. In Jerusalem, I said, well, let me send back the body. They're telling me it will cost she cheaper to bury she in Jerusalem. I say I don't want to send she back to I don't care how much it costs. Send she back. You know them people try all how to convince me to bury my mother-in-law in Jerusalem. And all how they convince me I say not at all. They ask me why. I say you feel drunk. Many years ago, 
in Jerusalem, there is a legend that all you bury a man here and he come back alive in three days. I had taken that chance. Send you back. Good night, Mr. Fella. <laughs> oh, gosh.